Says every day if we do with original and translation. Page 162, go back. Huh? 40, verse 40. Okay. In this, let us join it. Say, in this, in this there is, is no law of pattern, nor is there, there any advice. Advice. The practice of even a little of this dharma protects one from great fear. To the farmy mind, O joy of Guru, there is in this but one decision, many branching and endless of the decisions of the infant mind. 166. <clears throat> the unwise to delight in the flowery words, disputing about the Vedas, say that there is nothing other than this. Who are desired who hold the attainment of heaven as the goal of birth and its activities, whose words are laden with specific rights, bringing in pleasure and gossip. There is no fixity of mind for them who bring pleasure and power, and whose discrimination is stolen away. The Vedas enumerate the three gunas. You transcend the three gunas, O Be free from praise and opposition. Ever balanced, unconcerned with beginning and keeping centered in itself. To an enlightened Brahmana, Brahmana are as useful as a tank where there is blood everywhere. Seek to perform your duty, lay not claim to its fruits. Be you not the producer of the fruits of karma, neither shall you lean towards inaction. Perform action, Udhananda, being fixed in yoga, Renouncing attachment and even minded in success and failure. Equilibrium is very good. Motivated karma is Odhananjaya, far inferior to that performed in the equal mind. 
Take refuge in the evenness of the mind. Wretched are the results of the teacher. The one, the one fixed in the equanimity of mind, frees oneself in the life from the vice and virtue of life. Therefore, devote yourself to yoga. Work down to perfection is very yoga. Okay, so we can. Yes. Not yoga. Yoda. Yoda. So second chapter fifty parts, eh? Remember. Fifty. Five zero. <coughs> Why not take these books and return them in proper place so that it is unnecessary to keep Okay. Can you manage? Oh, the back. Oh, there. There's one more here. Yeah. You gotta take that. No, no, that is hers. No, this is not much. But it's okay. I'll pass it. Oh, here one. Oh, yes, that's the one. That one. Thank you. Hmm. So we started the reading of this book, Bhakti Ratnavali. This is called Strand One. Why strand? Strand is what? The necklace. It's a strand ne of the necklace, necklace with many strands. Nine strands or ten or thirteen strands. I don't know how many strands are there. So strand means what? Strand, strand is like one strand. necklace and then yeah. another one and then yeah. another one. So there are like thirteen such strands. No. Thirteen, right? Okay, so necklace. Okay. It's all necklace. If we can enjoy, <laughs> so we we have read uh, the probably one, two, three, four verses. So is it not? Yes. Or remember anyone? We have read uh, definitely. We have read three. Three. Yes. Okay. Then that that four. book will be four. four okay. It was page eighty six, eighty seven. Because the book starts there. The in introduction was these 82 3 pages. Okay. So <clears throat> now what she says in the verse numbers, second and third, very important. But he says uh, that, that we are saluting obeisance. Uh, second verse, what he says. I'll just read quickly the English translation. Obeisance, first one. Page 85, obeisance to Lord Sri Krishna, the even dweller in the beings as also their abode. Jano Nivasu, the Nivasu means the on which it is. Though reputed as born of Devaki, mother, he is really the eternal and ancient one. Surrounded by attendants of the Yodu clan, he destroyed the forces of unrighteousness by the prowess of his arms. He redeemed all beings, animate and inanimate, from their sins. By his benign and smiling countenance, he inspired divine love to the hearts of the women folk of Braja and Mathura. It is just praising about Krishna, no? The good, what are the glories? And by whose praise, second verse, and by whose remembrance, by whose sight, by whose salutation, by whose hearing, by whose worship, Men get rid of their sinful tendencies immediately to that Lord, the reputed center of abounding grace and benevolence, our repeated prostration. Says so these are the greatness of thinking of Krishna. Why we repeat Krishna's name? Why we uh, chant? Why the Bhagavat is glorious? Because as a God has embodied into human body. The infinite love, infinite compassion. So, by only Yat Kirtanam, eh, singing Kirtan, we call Kirtan, by Smaranam, just repeating, eh, remembering, uh, whenever in uh, any any point it is called just remember. Smaran, Saran Mana, it is called life spiritual practices to just remember him. Jadikshanam, even you look at him. You cannot look at him, but you look at his picture. That's why Mahapurushma said that you look at the picture of Ramakrishna. And it is just your mind will be purified. Because he is the purity incarnate. Eh? Jadikshanam. Jadbannanam. Hmm? 
Bandana is praise. Jat Shravanam. Listen to his holy uh, message or holy life and uh, what is called Leela, the divine play. Jad, jad Arhanam, by whose, whose worship. What happens? Lokasya Suddha Vidhunati. The immediately, so much sin, or sin means ignorance. All this ignorance can be wiped out just by looking at him, singing his glories, just uh, chanting his name, remembering him. So such is the glory of the Lord. It creates devotion in that way because so we are struggling with our own problems of day and night. So our heart is always sad for some reason or so this gives the uh, strength to think that just think of him. That's why Bhaisnava's school of thought is focused on all his repetition of the mantra, prayer, this, that. This is devotional practice. Now the third verse we read, salutation again to him, Bhuyo Nama. Uh, to him, Sat Brijina Chi Bidinat Shide Asata. Chidet. 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 I think Chidet or something. Him destroys a Chinnakara. Cut the sins of the devotees. Uh, who faces unrighteousness, who is the manifest as well as all beings, manifested as all beings. He not only cuts the bondage, but he is also be, has become every being and who bestows self-knowledge to the truth, seekers of truth, following the path of discrimination, the way of the Parabahansu. So, again he is talking about Krishna, who has become every being. See, that's why this Bhagavad is a great text where Vedanta is punched with really good. Jnanamishra Bhakti, the Vedantic knowledge with the mixed with devotion. That makes life very sweet. Those who actually understand Krishna, loving Krishna in dualistic way, that also is a very joyful one. The way Vaishnava devotees are having that. But it is with that Vedantic concept, if one can love, it will be more intensified and more purifying. So that, that says, that is Vyonamo Sad Brijina. Brijina means Papa. That is seen. Uh, <coughs> of Brijina is purity, pure. <coughs> Who is pure? Asata. <coughs> all this Asat means take here sin and unrighteousness. Asambhavaya Akilo Satta Murtai. He is the manifestation of all. Akilo means the universal Sattika Murti. <coughs> Pungshang Puno. Uh, all the from the hearts of the people who with the self knowledge is bestowed with the self knowledge. Those who are seeking truth by process of analysis, uh, they will following the path, it is he, it is the same, same Krishna. Now fourth we have read <coughs> the Lord Sri Pati. Pati means the husband. Of Sri means mother looks me. The Lord of Mother looks me. Jagapati, eh, you know, all this jagga, all the homo fire we perform. It's called is jagga is Narayana. It is said, all the salutations we do, it goes to Narayana. Sarva Namaskaram Keshavam Pratigachati. Eh, whatever salutation we offer to each other, it every salutation goes to Lord Narayana, who is the indweller of all of us. Sri of Pati, the Lord of the Mahalakshmi or the husband of uh, Lakshmi, then Prajapati, uh, Jagapati, Jagapati, the master of all the Jagna sacrifice, and Prajapati, the progenitor of all being. Prajapati means Hiranagar or Prajapati, who created this whole cosmic reality. Prajapati. Uh, Lokapati, who is the master of all the Lokas. Lokas means different planes. Eh? So, progenitor of all beings, the controller, as I had here, they have mentioned in another way. The controller of buddhi, prajapati, then prajapati, dharapati. Dhara means the earth. He is the pati, the lord of the earth. That means he is the, uh, pati means the lord of 
this earth, the planes of existence, uh, buddhi, our guide, all our buddhis is the Pati, the Lord, Master. That's why Duryodhana says there that you are guiding my intellect. What can I do? I know what is good, but I have no tendency for that. I know what is bad, but I cannot desist it because you are residing in the heart and you are guiding us. You are the Lord. You are the Master. So he put the blame to Krishna. Because all bad is you because you are the Lord. So you do, what can I do? I, I, I do whatever I do, it is you are whatever doing you me. <laughs> Whatever you are telling me, I am doing that. Now what did Krishna say? Huh? Did Krishna respond to that? I don't say, I don't see Krishna said anything there. There's a point here. Yeah, certainly a big point. Uh, that is hypocrisy. Unless you are very sincere. Really, if anyone feels that I am helpless, like like um, Girish Ghosh. Girish Ghosh said that I am to play a very bad role in this incarnation. So he has been given that role. So what he will do? He will have to play on the role. Suppose in the movie, a theatrical performance, uh, you take a role of a holy man, another one takes a role of a very bad guy. So, the bad guy, if taken the role, you'll have to play in a, that way, otherwise it is no role, it is no play. So, that is the way. If really one believes that everything is God is doing, that, that, that is a different level. And, and good and bad means nothing, there is a play of the Lord. But for our level, it, has, it means so much. Uh, and your buddhi, uh, buddhi pati, and, th and then pati gatischa, gatischa andhaka vrishni satyatam, the master of the, the protector of the earth, vrishni uh, satyatam, the guide and refuge of all the devotees, the final end sought by all virtuous men, may he, the perfect being, be propitious. This is the all praise about the Krishna. Huh? Be he be gracious so that my spiritual journey becomes easy. Now let us go to the verse number five on page eighty-seven. This book gives little explanation, but it's all Sanskrit. Yeah. This I got one copy, who has ordered from Amazon. So I do not. Did you give? You sometimes do think I don't know. <laughs> I suddenly got it's one surprise. beautiful. Oh, you just came in mail. I, 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 I saw, saw my on my desk. I was complaining about there is no light, this, that, and a beautiful light stand <laughs> is on my desk. What? What happened? That with me. Uh, yeah. yeah. See, <laughs> you can know much later that it is coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll use that today. Okay. Hmm. Achha. So, no, verse number then 5, it says, <clears throat> 5. <clears throat> ya Swanu Bhavo. Oh, it is because it is Devnagari, you people cannot, right. it will be difficult. It for, uh, not transliteration. So, that's why it is difficult. But, uh -huh. we can go, we can go. Yeah, you, you can do that. Ya, 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 shanu bhavam, shanu bhavam, akhila, akhila, shruti, shruti, saram ekam, saram ekam, adhyatma, adhyatma, deepa, deepa, mati, mati, ati tir shitam, ati tir shitam, tamu anham, tamu anham. Shangshari nam Kuruna yaho Purana guisham Tung basam basu Tung basu sunu Upayami Guru Muni nam Long sentence it's a little difficult also, not modern Sanskrit, but it is old style Sanskrit. So you have to be very uh, efficient in knowing the uh, Sanskrit well. 
here it says that Atha Bhagav Bhagavata Acharjang Shukang Stuti. This verse is praise for Lord Shukadev. You remember that story we told? That when the king Parikshit uh, was cursed that he will be dying within seven days and then he retired, gave up the all, he was the king of the country, he gave up all the charges to his son or whoever and then came back and retired in the forest waiting for death for seven days and he was only a purpose that to think of God these seven days, last, no other thought, no other business. So when he went and there were the big followers because whole country felt very much lost such a great uh, benevolent king uh, he is now deciding to retire what will be the condition of the country so the when he retired and then suddenly he found the Shukadeva Shukadeva was the son of Vyasa Vyasa Dev you know Vyasa Vasudeva, who has this Bhagavat is accredited to him. But that Bhagavat, what Vasu knew, he has given to Shukadev. And Shukadev then, then narrated that story uh, before this. How it goes, relates back and forth, I do not know. <laughs> because now, he, now Shuka um, is listening about Krishna Katha. Sukadev is talking about that. But this entire book is conversation between the King Parikshit and the Shuka. But what he did, he referred to the old story. Sukadev, though responding, sorry, Sukadev responding to the question of Parikshit, but what he is talking, Basso's old, what he has heard, that he is incorporating in his responses. So it is actually Basso's composition as it were. That's why it is credited to the Basso day. And then, <clears throat> and the seven days that conversation went on, and that is the book we are getting. So here it says, Ya, yeah, that um, uh, this I, I seek shelter at the feet of Sri Shukadev, like the last one. Vyasa sunum upayami, Vyasa sunum upayami gurum muninam, who is a guru of the munis. Eh? I am taking sanna Vyasa and the spiritual teacher of the contemplatives, means munis, who out of his compassion for those entangled in the world, ya sangsharinam karunayaya, eh? karunaya aho, karunaya being compassionate, he said, this Sukadev said, reveal this most esoteric of all Puranas, Purana Gujam. That means it is the most important and most secretive. Secretive means it is hidden. It is not openly talked or written somewhere. So that's why it is only Sukadev is carrying this. That's why the people came to know. And afterwards, long time passed, it was now memorized and written and written, the handwritten text. Now we are getting that this text. But it was all reserved in a very secretive way with few people only who carried this wisdom. So, which has got its own uniqueness. What is the doctrinal and poetical? This is a poetical verse of the description of Krishna's life and story. And also doc doctrinal, the doctrine of devotion. <coughs> doctrine of devotion has been, that is called the one of the most authentic book on devotion is this, this book. Which contains the essence of all Vedas. So you, you need, need not have to read the Vedas. If we can read this text, then all the spiritual ideal, different levels of spiritual thought and the ultimate experience of the absolute non-duality Uddhava Gita, you talk about it. See, it is the highest of the Vedanta text. Uh, it is a part of the entire Bhagavad. So, it not only a devotional book, but it carries the highest Vedantic message 
two qualified non-dualistic idea and all this, this all hidden as if you are reading the whole Vedas. If you have the eye to see and read that. But Vaishnavas don't do that. Vaishnavas only read the 10th chapter where Radha Krishna play is mentioned there. But they don't care for Uddhava Gita where Uddhava is talking about the highest Vedanta. He does not, they don't like it. And another, another places wherever there are other doctrinal ideas <coughs> incorporated in by Krishna, they don't uh, emphasize that. As like uh, Christian uh, churches, they emphasize one aspect of Christ and prayer and devotion and one and forget Akbar totally denying the aspect of the qualified non-dualistic idea or absolute mm, Vedantic idea. So, which contains the essence of all the Vedas and the Vedantas, which is of which is of unrivaled excellence. It is really expressed in such a way there is no parallel such book is available. There is no parallel. And which is verily a spiritual light, lamp unto those who want to cross the blinding darkness of it. You can see the English translation itself, such poetry and such depth is there. Every word uh, has such inner uh, meaning and you can spend on some time on explaining them. Can I just ask a question? In the parentheses it has those little numbers. Uh, this, is, is this, this is original 13 volumes. From the Bhagavata. Uh, Bhagavata the first canto. canto. Second chapter. Second chapter, third verse. Okay, so they seem to, they're skipping around. Oh, no, 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 he is, that is his uniqueness. That is the uniqueness of Vishnu Puri that he has called the whole verses and called here and here and here one and but putting this in a order. that's why necklace so necklace that's why necklace it is very unique well. characteristic of this uh, people yeah. who can memorize that or in how we can computerize we can bring out a child what is this idea a click and it will pull out but it is by their brain they did it no other tool was available but it's unique then. Swami, when he says that uh, it's revealed in this most esoteric of all Puranas, hmm. what's the reference? The Bhagavata? Yeah, the, the, this book is in the, the That's Bhagavata. That's what I thought it would be. It, the reference isn't the Bhakti Ratnavali, it's the, to the original source. Right. Original source yeah. is all Bhagavata. Thank you. Hey, all the verses, one, two, three, four, we read up to the Fourth verse today. Now reading the fifth one. You mm -hmm. see, there is a mark here. You see, look that first yeah, bracket no. two dot four dot five. Do yeah. you do you see? Yes, I do. Ah, those are the second canto of the second book. You mm -hmm. you go to our bookstore, you will find thirteen volumes. So you take the first volume one. That yeah. is the one. Then in that second chapter and the verse number what mm -hmm. this reference is giving so that we can match. If you want to know in details. Go to the original. Go check to the source yeah, yeah, book. Sure. But uh, what's apparent here because these re these reference numbers aren't in order is that it's a that compiled is the, document. Yeah, that's that's why I'm saying it is okay. the uniqueness of the man who could collect. Remember which can to which verse will be similar thought is there. Mm -hmm. He's pulling from there, one pulling from here. Mm -hmm. That's the unique brain of the person who have done it. That's why it is we are getting in such small volume. The essence of the Bhagavad. Here, <coughs> this uh, uh, this Vishnu Puri who has compiled this, he has this commentary in this book. What it says, Atho Bhagavata Acharyam Shukang Stoti. Now, Bhagavat Bhagavat Acharya, the teacher of the Bhagavata, who is who is the Shukadeva, he is now being praised. Yeah, Swanu Ja Swanu Bhavamiti, uh, who has experienced this in his own experience, in his own Ubhava. Saha Nijaha Asadharano Sadhyo Bhagavad Bhakti Pradatvad Adi Rupeno Onu Bhavo Mahima Jasata. It is his own Asadharan and unique, substantial, unique experience about his devotion, Bhagavad Bhakti, that with that 
he is describing the glory of the Krishna. Atayeva, therefore, Akhila Shrutinam, all the Upanishads, Shruti is the Upanishad, that Saram, it is the essence of all the Upanishads. It is not in your book, it is here, in this book is a small way, they have given all this kind of thing. Is this a commentary by Vishnu Puri on his own? Yeah, commentary by Vishnu Puri. So, here he says, Atayeva, therefore, Akhilo Shrutinang Saram, the essence of all the Upanishads, Atayekang Sestang, Atayekang Puranang Madhe. So, Ekang Sestang, only one, the supreme, this Upanishad, that Purana, and this is Gujyam, means Gopyam. Secret. See Bhagavatam. This Bhagavat book. Sangsarinam. Sangsarinam. Andho Tamaha. The Andho. When it blinding. Andho. Only blind. Blind person is called Andho. Tamo means the darkness. Suppose a dark person. His whole world is dark for him. So this Bhagavat. Is like. Removing samsari nam andhatamam, this tamas, the darkness, blinding darkness of the worldly people, to remove that, oti durgyam, it is very difficult to penetrate. That samsarakam, otititi shatam. So, what is this world of duality? To get over it, otikram kara, otititi shatam means. Just swimming across or over, going beyond. Uttaritum ichhatang to help people to get across the ocean of this samsara. Kriti adhyatma deepam. That for this, this, it is like a lamp. This chapter, what is talking about, it is like a lamp of in spiritual life. Sakshad atma prakashakam, which is spontaneously. Reveals the inner glory of the Atman, Kurunaya Aho, with much compassion that Shukadev has given to the humanity. Atayebo Muninang Guru Asrayam, and I, therefore, I take refuge in that Guru of the, all the Munis of the world. Munis means the holy people who meditate upon Krishna, on the Lord. So, see, it is all Vedantic. See, whenever you read these lines, it is very Vedantic. Here is some note in this book in English. It is said, of all the Puranas, the Bhagavata claims to record occult teaching. Occult means here a very secret. Occult teachings not revealed in the rest of them. It thus holds a preeminent position. The reason assigned for the production of this Puranika Magnam Apas by Vyasa after his composition of the Mahabharata was that the Mahabharata had not supplied the spiritual knowledge that the world needed and this latter work served as a complement to the Mahabharata. You know Mahabharata is Ramayana and Mahabharata, two great epic. And Ramayana it talks about the Rama's glory, Mahabharata for the uh, Krishna's and here <laughs> And Mahabharata, whatever has been explained, the spiritual aspect of it has not been emphasized so much. There are, but not that much. That's why this book is as it has been composed after Mahabharata. After Maha, composing the Mahabharata. And it, so the story goes on. This, the story goes on like that. One day, and the, the, the Vyasa was sitting and meditating on the bank of the river Saraswati, uh, which is the now the uh, hidden now, and it is called the all the civilization, early civilization yes. grew on the bank of the river Saraswati, in the civilization, in the in the valley civilization, that, and and it is said on the bank of the na, river Narayana river or what yeah. No, 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 no. On the bank of this, this river, Saraswati, he was meditating. And Narada came, mm, singing his uh, Krishna's glory. 
So what happened? Uh, Narada appears before Vyasa, then Vyasa asks, Narada, I have composed Brahma Sutra. Uh, I have uh, uh, Puranas. Puranas also I have wrote. But uh, uh, Mahabharata already wrote. But still I am not getting inner peace. No peace inside. After doing so much <laughs> the Brahma Sutras, <laughs> Mahabharata and other Puranas, then he said, nah, you, have, you, have, you have not dealt with the Leela, divine sport of Krishna. Like that, then you will get peace. And that is the way he got inspired to compose this Bhagavad. And he did it? He finded peace? Of course. He has already, he's come, his peace is not our level of peace. Uh, he who can, from whose brain can come the Brahma Sutras, which has become the e eternal storehouse of infinite wisdom and knowledge. Uh, and all the Puranas, if you read, how beautifully the spiritual truths of Up Upanishads have been uh, expressed in the Puranic story. Sometimes confusing to ordinary mind, but to the masses, he did it. And writing this, this type of Bhagavad, this, this verses, what a brain, Baba. Some say that is not one basso. That's of course another uh, opinion, but God knows what about it. But Vyasa himself is considered the incarnation. Yeah, incarnation. Vyasa is considered an incarnation of whom? Shiva. That's why she, Vyasa came, appeared before Shankar. And he challenged about his uh, commentary. And then after three days discussion, then he revealed himself. Uh, I am Vyasa. I am very pleased. And he said to Shankara, eh, yeah, whatever I, you have written, I have full approval. Because you have really understood my intention. Others are writing commentary. They don't understand my view. They are putting their view and thinking it is my intention. That means there are different uh, commentaries on Vyasa Vyasa Sutras or Brahma Sutras, but Vyasa himself confirmed that this is my opinion that you have expressed, Shankar. And supplied the spiritual knowledge that the world needed, and this later work served as a complement to the Mahabharata. The Mahabharata is designated as Itihasa, history, and Bhagavata coming under the designation of the Purano, ancient load. So, these are the two distinctions. Uh, that Mahabharata is the Itihasa, because it is a story of the king, what has happened. And in that period, what Krishna has said, mainly it is the fight of the Kuru Pandavas and other kings. Eh? And this is false in the history, history side. But this is not merely history, but it is designed as the ancient load. It is much of the, what will you say, ancient lore means, what is the deeper meaning you can, the Purano is called ancient lore. Some, some, some stories, you say, oh, you, you exemplify one thing, you say, oh, we heard from our forefather, there is a story like this. Uh, in, in our experience, what do we say? Oh, oh this line, a Mahapurush Maharaj said like that, no? So it is not, actually you are not quoting date-wise history, but you are referring to some truth which has been lived in the past by some uh, great soul. That is the Purana. The antiquity and genuineness of the Bhagavata Purana, what we are reading now, is a point of dispute even among the orthodox pandits, orthodox scholars. What the, what the con conflict is there? <clears throat> The controversy as to its date and parentage has not yet received its final word. The elaborate artificiality of the language and style generally of the works is its distinct characteristic, marking it as a production of comparatively latter-day post-Puranic Sanskrit. 
They are saying if the same person would have written, his Sanskrit style will be the same. Uh, but it says that this it has been the Sanskrit language as is used is dif different. It is post as he says it post Pura. Different from Vyasa's time. Vyasa's time. What he has composed in other areas, it is not exactly that type of language. So it must be different. Suppose you read Sami Vivekananda day and night, then you can understand uh, what was the style of it is English, what 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 words used to use. But if you Sami Vivekananda's name, someone put some another uh, flowery language, something uh, which will not match with the uh, style. So that's why he's saying that some scholar say, no, no, it is not the same Vyasa, it is somebody else. Anyhow, okay. mark, marking it as the production of comparatively later day post Buranic Sanskrit. But the erudition of the author of this encyclopedic work on Vaishnavism come Vedanta is wonderful. So he said, whatever may be that, we are not concerned. Uh, it is, it's, it's spiritually beneficial and its erudition uh, uh, the author, how he has composed these verses, that is to be appreciated. Now, <clears throat> the Vishnupuri's task in his own words. Vishnupuri is who? Composer. Who, who collected this. Yeah. But he says, uh, it is Sanskrit is too difficult. Shall we go to that? Yeah. We can try, but it will be a struggle. And even Gita, stand, Gita chanting is uh, something Bhapa. Chondi chanting is Sanskrit chanting is difficult sometimes. <laughs> and Bhagavat will be how much difficult. Okay. What is it? Hearing from afar about its greatness. Uh, who says it is Vishnupuri, the writer of this, the composer of this book? He says, Vishnupuri says that hearing from afar about its greatness, I approached and plunged deep into this blessed nectarine motion of the Bhagavata, and with my mind's eye, clarified by the collyrium of Krishna's grace. These are all I mean, beautiful words here. He says, it is with the ocean of with the deep into the blessed nectarine ocean of Bhagavata, with my mind's eyes clarified, my mind is always deluded, confused. But with the mind's eye clarified, my eyes become clear by the collidium of Krishna's Krishna's grace is like your eyeless. No? What you put in the eye? What do you call that? Kajal. Kajal. But the English name is what? Uh, eyeliner. Eyeliner. Yeah. Wash. I was washing his eyes so he could see clearly. No, no, no. no, no, no. That's what it said in the dictionary. Colorium is the definition I wash. That I would make sense because how would the liner yeah. help you see right. more clearly? But, but they give the eyeliner only for clarifying the eye, clearing because, the yeah, eyes. That is the, that is the that purpose. Is the purpose. purpose. Anyway. Yeah, the children, the babies are given. In Indian tradition, babies are given every day. Mother will, that's a Krishna, you will find when he is a baby, yeah. eye, eyeliner. Yeah. And it's like this. Mm -hmm. eh? and, freshly and, make it, yeah. and, and it does what happens probably by blinking, it, it, it does something cleaning. cleaning. Mm -hmm. I was in Texas, so I was having some uh, eye rashes. And then uh, Brahmapana said, Oh, Swami, do one thing, one, you know. Only in the eye, in the above, there comes this uh, pollen. So you take baby, uh, yeah, um, soap. Like what you call baby? Johnson baby soap. Baby, uh, baby, baby shampoo. And then clean the eye lashes. And then with the water, clean it. And actually it works miracle because it gathers fast here. And it, because it is blinking every time, it goes into the eyeball and other areas, and then irritation starts. But you can do that. It is a good thing. I, I, I experimented, and it is very good. Allergy. Before getting any medicine, 
if it immediately you can do baby shampoo and take soak it in some napkin and then clean the eyes from upper like closing it like this and then with the wash it with water yeah. so this is the corellium that krishna's grace is the corellium so by that grace my doubts and confusion and ignorance is removed i perceived the gems of divine love deposited in it eh? vishnu buddhist composition so <coughs> it is not bhagavat that's why you see there is no reference there is right. no reference point in his own word yeah his own word and the seven verse with very great effort i am lifting off like a precious treasure this great gem of divine love out of the ocean of the bhagavata for the enjoyment of the lord's devotees vishnavas in this i am following the command of the supreme being lost in my heart hmm? that means i am taking god's command and i am taking this a plunge to bring out this wonderful nectar in like this for the good of the devotees for their enjoyment spiritual enjoyment that's true it is how many people will be getting benefited by this now it is vishnu puri ji said now the eighth verse the excellence of the anthology are stated in vishnu puri's own words uh, he speaks about the glory of this book himself in his own words कंठे कृता कुलमशेषम अलंकोटिस्मस्थिता निखिले तमोपहतीट इज इजियर दिस वर्ष इज इजियर नट इट्स कल कंठे कृता कूल अशेषम अलंकोटिस्मस्थिता निखिलेक meaning what keep this verses in your neck so that you can recite yourself chant yourself because in early days that was the way to study the book it was not that available books so you have to go to the guru and listen and your memory should be sharp so it is keep it in your throat that is the necklace means keep it in your throat not for uh, just name set but it is to remember in your own round neck it is an adornment to the wearer that means one who wears it it is really an adornment it looks as the necklace looks nice in the neck which is kantekrita when it is taken in the kantha kulam asesham alankaroti it becomes like alankara ha huh? besmasthita nikhilam evo tamo apahanti placed in the house if you if you keep in the house this bhagavat then where are also <coughs> establishes in the heart it removes the darkness of ignorance that means it it helps to remove the ignorance of the mind may all good people who are always on their bosom means always apply themselves intensely to the study of this brilliant and precious necklace made of the gems of divine love this also means the book called bhakti ratnam it is vishnu puri is saying so this book is offered to the humanity for the good of them for the betterment of them let them enjoy it keep it in their neck and experience freedom is praising his own book yeah unless you praise it unless you praise it uh, no one will read it But the it's time is over. No, few minutes. On the back, or another so author said how great the book is. They do, but they have not stuff. given their own picture. Vishnu Puri has not given. Basu Dev has not given picture. But they have to praise. Otherwise, people will not know what what is glory. That's why it is you not. Know, okay, six ways of Vedantic way of uh, uh, reading the text. 
Upakram Rupa Sangha, like that. At the beginning, you talk about the glory of the book you are going to study. That is the, for everything. When you are studying something, you should know it is unique. And in your whole study, you will find the uniqueness has been repeated. Oh, it is so unique. See what has been said. So that ordinary people feel attracted towards that and start practicing. Now, <clears throat> Vishnupuri's composition is again going on. When there is the Bhagavata, why this anthology again? There are many, nine, verse number nine, page 88. There are many who, do not apathetic, cannot study or hear the full original Bhagavata, owing to their preoccupation with the various affairs of life. It is very true, who have the time, to read such a huge book, 13, uh, 10, uh, 13, 13 volumes, and, and, and verse number is how much? 32,000 or something. Uh, uh, about 30,000 or 32,000, I forgot anyhow. So that's a huge amount of reading. Who have the time to read and continuously? Some start reading. I started reading one and read up to few volumes with commentary and this and that. Then volume for volume so uh, in my room still the books are there <laughs> this each verse has uh, t t uh, what you call this Sridhar Swami's com commentary on the Bhagavata Mool Bhagavata the most authentic uh, commentary is Sridhar Swami uh, Sridhar Swami's commentary and on that commentary Pundits have written bah, bah, 8 pages, 10 pages bah. <laughs> One verse is such big, so we, we, we in our life, then you can dedicate the whole lifetime, then it's possible. But it's nice to hear the Bhagavad Katha. Yeah, Bhagavad Because they are masters, yeah. they have meditated upon that, and they speak one verse and relate in such a way, really your heart will be charmed. Bhagavad Katha, really, if you go to the Bhagavad Katha people, or you know, online you can find some of yeah. the it is really it will enhance so much devotion in your heart but Hindi they speak mostly in Hindi 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 is very popular and close to Sanskrit also yeah, I, I listened to one when I was, I was in Vrindavan I went to one, one uh, in not, not real Vrindavan but in our front of our mission Ramakrishna mission little distance there is a Bhagavad Katha right Thousands of people. Uh, Bhagavat. Week. <laughs> Katha means, as I am reading this, not like me, they know so much. She will read one with music and this and then, then explain this and bring the story, what is mentioned there, which Purana, mm -hmm. which this, and it becomes so charming. So you are intrigued for the hours and hours. You will not, you will forget. It is not one hour talk. Here people are tired with. Uh, after 45 minutes, my God, or 30 minutes itself. Now, uh, but we bow, we make them bound to sit there for one hour. <laughs> uh, but it is too much. But they go on two hours, three hours, four hours. People will be forgetful about everything. The charming, charming way of presentation. Mm -hmm. So he says that. Uh, uh, nine, no? Yeah. There are many who, though not apathetic, no, no, we, we are willing to listen, we are really willing to study, but cannot study or hear the full original Bhagavata, owing to their preoccupation with the various affairs of life. Let this effort of Vishnupuri, a sannyasina toira bukta, or tirhut, that means uh, in a particular place. Huh? Be Oh. oh, there is a place between Darbhanga and Majapharpur oh, in Bihar. So that place, okay. That means the Sami used to live there. That is the major thing. Uh, in those days, there is no home address. Uh, house number, yeah. zip code, nothing. Uh, even now, when we are born, now I do not know. In India, later you write name and the village and post office. And later we will go. Only the name the post office and the name of the person and the village. Now they are going into zip code and other things. But in our childhood, 
letter will you will, will get the letter in the whole village they know the the, the person who distributes the um, postman. postman he knows whose house is what what house yeah. <laughs> so you know everybody so with the title if they say the title which house they know and they, they deliver things what about a big city Huh? But if what happens in a big city? Big city, I was not money in the early days. I was so not. So it is near this hospital, yes. near that theater. <laughs> behind, behind this, behind this, in front of, this. <laughs> in front of the school building, really, in the back side of the school, or the there's a dispensary. <laughs> yeah, lot of addresses are custom made. I mean, people just devise their own address and put on the mail. So mm -hmm. then somehow the postman is able to figure out. Then now it has become mostly like in this country. Yeah. Now it's street number. They can even say in go city. left from here, turn right from here in the address. <laughs> <laughs> so here he says he's born in that place to bring together the gems of the verses from various sections of the Bhagavata and string them together into a consistent whole becomes useful to such devotees. The first five verses quoted early from the Bhagavata are by way of salutation to the Lord. The next four verses are the compiler's introduction in his own words. Now the text proper begins with the Sutta's verses stating that religion and spirituality are based on devotion to God. So now it is coming really the verse start. One, two, six. Hmm? So and I have another, just we read this one verse, eh? <coughs> Tenth verse. Savai Pungshang Paro Dharmo Yato Bhakti Adhok Shaje Ahoi Tuki No, no, no. Ahoi Tuki We break it, otherwise you will not be able to read. Ahoi Tuki Apratihata Jayatma Ahui Tuki Apratihata Yayatma Supta Shidati Suprasidati Jaya Atma Suprasidati Ahui Tuki Apratihata Jaya Atma Suprasidati Atma Suprasidati Sabhui Pungshang Paro Dharma. That supreme duty of man, that is the Parama Dharma, the greatest virtue, greatest duty of a human birth is what? Thakur said, God realization. So what he says? So the supreme duty of a man consists in following such activities as will generate in him the pure devotion to God. Uh, whatever you do, you grow love for God. Thakur said, uh, Bhagavani Bhalavasa. To love God. So Bhagavata's fundamental point is saying that the very first canto, second chapter, six verse, it says that the supreme duty of a man, Savoy Pungshang Paro Dharma, Pungshang Paro Dharma, the Paro Supreme Dharma of the human being is consist in what? The following such activities. Yato Bhakti Adhokshaje. Bhakti means love for Adhokshaje is Krishna, the Narayana. Sabhai Pungshan Pada Yato Bhakti Radhishaje. Ahui Tuki Aprajyata. So that it becomes Ahui Tuki means unconditional. We love things for our purpose. We have some agenda. But no, this love will be unconditional. Aprajyata. This will not be obstructed. Our love will not be obstructed by anything. Apratyato, ahi tuki, apratyato. And ahi tuki means unconditional. Un, na hetu. Na hetu, ahetu. Ahetu ka. And apratyato, apratyato. It is irresistible love. Irresistible love for the Lord that it moves on. It drives away everything from life. Love for God becomes so intense like Thakur. When he was apratyato, uh, is an interrupted flow of love for ma ma ma. He forgot the whole universe. Who is there? Day and night passed. How did it pass? He didn't know. So that was the condition. So that type of bhakti generate in us 
jaya atma by which the atma which is self through prasidati will be perfectly peaceful and joyful through prasidati so it says pre the supreme duty of a man consists in following such activities as will generate in him pure devotion to god adhokshaja or vishnu the same adhokshaja is another name it will come again and again in the whole bhagavat adhokshaja is the name of narayana within bracket it is there which is free from all extraneous motives oi oh extraneous means means ahitu there will be no hetu Ex- yeah, any reason i i love because of this no no other hetu ahitu so no extraneous extraneous motive and apratihata uh, it is not shakeable or it is not terminable uh, un- unstoppable by antagonistic circumstances by such a devotion a person's mind attains to supreme peace and the note notice that at the start vishnu is praised as the supreme deity deserving the adoration of all devotees the bhagavat being a vishnava text has necessarily got to exalt vishnu as the deity but this is not to be done not done in in a narrow, narrow sectarian way vaishnavas take this as sectarian only krishna only narayana uh, but it does not mean that no narayana means naranam ayanam <clears throat> what is the ultimate goal of all human being so what is the goal brahman is the goal vedanta will say but they say krishna is the goal there is in this text no antagonism no other conceptions of deity besides the appellations for the deity such as vasudeva vishnu narayana etc have highly philosophical and universally acceptable meanings vasudeva means what see these are the different meanings vasudeva means he in whom all beings dwell eh? we say god what is the definition some uh, sarvagatananda's definition ground of our dwelling G, which is ground, O of our D, G O D, of our dwelling. We dwell in God. So that how you dwell in God, Asti. because it's all all Brahman. Yes, yes, yes. Ah, ah, yes. So it is Vedantic. So he is pulling out this idea. You may have the word you may say Vasudeva, but you may think Vasudeva means only Krishna, none, none other boy. or the krishna standing like that no it can be taken in this deeper meaning also vishnu who is vishnu vishnu is the he who pervades everything vyapnoti uh, iti vishnu now narayana what is called narayana okay the resting place for all jeevas naranam uh, ayana our ultimate resting place of all being and adhoksaja these words will come again and again in the whole bhagavata so he is saying adhokshaja means one who is beyond the cane of the senses akshi ok ok oxy probably is the eyes the senses cannot perceive that beyond that that is called the adhokshaja in sanskrit the generation of devotion is put forward as the meaning and purpose of life pursuit of all other values has to subserve this purpose the dharmas the duties of man are many those imposed by scriptures imposed by society by family by the state etc according to the bhagavat practice of devotion to god is supreme over all this what are the, all this you can read scripture it is beyond that bhakti is more study of scripture is for bhakti if you read only and there is no devotion for god ramakrishna needs to, to spit on that uh, the dry intellectualism what is there in it and you will be a bad logician that's all uh, and the practice of devotion to god is above society society is uh, control society is imposed rules you are a good guy in the society it is beyond that you should love god that is higher than this family and then also in the state rules like that 
God is supreme over them all, as that alone makes life in ultimately meaningful. But this does not mean that the so-called secular duties should be completely separated from our devotional life. The watertight compartments made of them as the spiritual and the secular. If all our duties are done as an offering to the Lord, they become a part of the devotional life. And hereby, thereby, life becomes dominated by the pursuit of devotion. As instructed in these verses, it is, it is, it is the main teaching of the Bhagavad Gita too. Such a life of integration of spiritual and secular pursuits, that is called Bhagavata Dharma. So it's a very good definition, remember it. What is called Bhagavata Dharma? The pursuit, such an, a life of integration of spiritual life, and the secular pursuit. We are not to give up the world. Bhakti school is that. Vedanta will say give up, give up, give up. Bhakti school does not say give up. You do your duties, but think that Krishna's. It belongs to Krishna. So it's a secular, pursuit of secular, but it is not secular, it is becoming spiritual. That is the uniqueness of uh, Vedanta, true Vedanta will all discard. Everything is Maya, everything is changing. I don't care for that. That is the Bhagavata Dharma. It is discussed in details in the introduction and in the Bhakti Ratnavali text too. If a man does not consciously strive to develop devotion to all the activities in life, he has lived his life in vain. This is the sum and substance of all the teachings of the Bhagavata. According to the accepted Vedic teachings, the discharge of the duties Swadharma in the right spirit is said to make man fit for Jnana Yoga. How can dharma then be the cause of bhakti? The answer is given to the following words of the sutta that it is bhakti that produces jnana and swadharma is only indirectly <coughs> generative of jnana. <coughs> Devotion being that intervening factor. So it says without bhakti you cannot be a jnani. So it is said also that after you practice bhakti for a long time and your heart becomes pure then you can really understand. Then you really become a Vedantin. Otherwise, you will be logician. <coughs> there is no end of logic. Eh? There are people, they, they spend their whole life only for uh, argument and uh, cross-argument. But the heart becomes dry and dry. But actually, those who are purified, when they do, you can see. We have seen such sadhus, really. It's a fortune to see them. <coughs> and their life, if you be with them, you can feel what it like. They are there, as I just said, that it is fried in the uh, ghee and soaked into the syrup. Uh, their life is Rasulullah, or uh, what do you call <coughs> sweet juicy ball. Ah, sweet juicy ball. Sweet juicy ball. Yes. So, we ended today. What verse? Remember? Verse, yes, Maharaj. I've marked it. Verse 11, we have to get to. No, we should have to. We finished 10, we have to get to 11. 10. Now you can read it more because it's some explanation is given. But it is to understand much if you want to. I don't think that is needed much more, but at least what is here in the book, if we can do that, that will benefit us. So do you know we are in big trouble now? Not big trouble. That trouble is over.